Oh, Lisa Lynn is here during tax season. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would like you. So welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to I Take the Lead. We are a leads group organization based out of Portland um, and we're in other states as well, including Washington. And this is one of our networking webinars. We call it the, the networking webinar. However, today we have the opportunity to have Dottie Scott talk to us about artificial intelligence and how she uses it. Some of us remember Jeff Mays had talked about it, how he uses it to market. Dottie's going to talk. Dottie has a totally different style, uses AI for, for um, differently than the way the way that Jeff uses it. So I'm really excited to hear what Dottie has to speak about today. I know she uses it for other things besides marketing. So um, let's see, I, I'm just making sure we're getting everybody in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Dot, we've, Dottie's been a member of ITICLE. You know, it's been almost 20 years, Dottie. I, don't, I, don't I know. know. I don't know how the decades go. I know. I know. And, and she's um, she's been instrumental in helping a bunch of us, including me. She taught me how to use social media. Um, I've learned so much about marketing from her. And I, I continue to learn from Dottie as well. So I'm glad you are all here to be able to witness this. And what I love most about Dottie is she is a techie. She understands all the techie talk, but I don't. I'm not a techie. And she keeps it simple enough for, for even me, the 60 plus crowd, to understand what she's doing and why she's doing it and, and how to do, most importantly, how to do what she does. So I'm just going to Go ahead and let Dottie take it from there. Okay, I'll share my screen in a moment. I actually do have a presentation planned um, on AI and how I use it in my business. But before I do that, I wanted to share a super top secret with you guys. I've only been sharing this with my networking peeps and my actual clients. And that is on March 1st, so four days ago, Yeah. Um, Google has decided that if we do not do something on our Google business profiles at least once a month, they are going to consider our business inactive. Whoa. Oh, wow. So we do not want to fall into that category. And it could be simply uploading a picture or getting one review um, or making one post or posting an event. Just one thing, doesn't matter what it is. You need to log in and do one thing every month. So put it on your calendar so you don't forget. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Just wanted to share that before I completely forgot about it. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. Okay. So you should now be seeing my screen. Yep. And we're going to go over essential AI tools. Now, I will say I use some of these. Some of them I am learning. And some of them I just found out about at a conference I went to a few weeks ago. And I haven't had a time to really, truly explore them. But the one thing I want to say about AI tools in general, there's probably 100 every day coming out. So, so don't feel like. <laughs> you have to use every one of these. Pick whatever works into your business and how you run your business. Because my whole goal with it is to be more efficient in what I'm already doing. It's not to go off on some tangent and go down a rabbit hole and put everything off in my business while I'm learning something. So I just want to share that with you so that you don't feel that pressure of, oh my God, I got to figure all this out. You don't. Pick one that's going to be the best for your business efficiency, learn it, and then move on. Kind of like, you know, picking up a new social media account. <laughs> so these are the four areas that I use. Writing is by far the first and most important area in my business. 
Um, the next are images, um, video, and I don't really do audio, but it is a big section that a lot of people use because they're doing podcasts and stuff like that. Uh, so those are the sections that we're going to talk about today. Now there are, you know, there's graphic artist ones, there's book covers, there's, I mean, there's like a plethora of everything out there. The 85%-ish, I would say, of the new programs coming out are garbage. Mm. Just being honest, I've tried um, several. I'm just like, this is pointless. Um, so maybe it's me. Don't know. Um, but anyway, so the first one I want to talk about is what is by far the most important in my business. And that are that is the writing tools. Um. Chat GPT is the one that I use mostly exclusively. Um, you can, uh, if you have the paid version, you can actually train it and save that training. They're calling them um, exclusive GPTs or no custom GPTs. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, so if you have the paid version, you have access to that. And that just simply means that you've come up with a prompt that you that gives you great results and you can save it and use it over and over again. Um, so that is one feature that I use when I'm writing like blog posts, for example. Um, but I do almost all of my writing these days, no matter what it is, in chat and then I change it yeah. because it's faster to come up with and then edit something than it is for me to start on a blank page and type everything I want. Um, so mm -hmm. that's one big time saving thing that I that I use. Um, there is another one called Claude and it is actually better for long form. So for example, you can upload um, an extensive number of PDFs. You can even upload a book if you have that in a PDF and ask for it to summarize it, and it will do that. On ChatGPT, if you did that, it would freak out, and it, it would take you many sessions, and it's just awkward and cumbersome. Hmm. So for anything super long, you don't want to use ChatGPT. Um, Gemini is the renaming of Bard, which is the one that Google has come out with. And not surprisingly, that one is best for um, if you're going to drop a link in and have them summarize a page, or if you actually want to go out and search on the internet, even though ChatGPT says it will do it, and it does, it just for whatever reason isn't a whole lot of accuracy there, and Gemini has the edge on that particular part. Now... I, I know like ChatGPT has a free version. Do the others have free versions or do you have to pay for them all or? Um, I think they all have free versions. Okay. Um, this is one I just learned and I have not checked out yet. And that's Deep L and that is translation. So if you have something you want to translate into just about any language, hmm. um, you can drop it in there. And the person that, I learned about this that uses it, says that it's the most accurate on the translations that he has um, tried in the past. Because there's, I guess there's several out there that will do translations, including Google Translate. Um, hmm. But but this is more accurate, supposedly. I only speak one language, so I couldn't tell you one way or the other. <laughs> and the bottom one here, the D hyphen ID, is um, text to animation. So you can type in something and it'll kick you out an animation describe, um, for whatever you described. Again, I've not tried that one. Could be fun. Yeah. A lot of these things I think are fun to play with when, when I'm, you know, have spare Word. time. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Is the uh, Deep L, does that do audio translation or strictly written? You know, I don't know that. Um, the person I was talking to that told me about it was putting in PDFs, so it was written. 
but I don't know that it's exclusive to that. There are some audio ones out there and video that will now translate whatever you say into another language. And it somehow magically makes your lips look like you're actually speaking that language yeah. instead of the old Japanese dub over stuff that we had in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I haven't played with that technology, but I've seen it um, several times with other people and it's amazingly accurate. It's just weird to me, but, huh. but yeah, that is a up and coming thing. I believe in video does that, which is one I'll talk about in a minute. So do you love my old fashioned typewriter with all of the <laughs> smoke coming out of it? Yeah. <laughs> that came from mid journey. Oh, did it really? Oh, very cool. Yeah. I was actually able to log into mid journey today. Um, unlike some of the other ones, as did this one. Oh, okay. I tried yeah. cell phone, but you know, it just didn't work. <laughs> so video is another big one that I use in my business. And of all of these here, Descript is by far my favorite. Um, I don't think they have a free version anymore. Okay. What Descript does is it will allow you to upload a video of any length, I believe. Uh, I've done videos that are, are an hour long and it hasn't said no. And while it uploads, it translates it and and um, gives you a transcript on half of the screen and you'll see the video on the other half. So what you can do is read the transcript and remove words that you didn't want to say. So let's say you're repurposing a longer video and you want to cut some out. You can highlight the text and hit delete and it takes that same section out of the video at the same time. Oh, wow. So you don't have to do, if you've ever tried any of the old video editors where you have to, you know, like listen and then you cut it where it is and then you listen and you find another spot and you cut it and you have to delete it. it it's like so much easier than any of those timeline editors. Uh, the other cool thing that, that I use it for is all I some of you probably know I do interviews and whatnot of different business owners um, that I do like a Facebook Live or something. I then take those um, longer interviews and every question that I ask somebody, I then cut that question into a small video mm. and then let them, you know, put it out through social media or whatever. Uh, it's actually a package I sell. Um, but I do that in the script by highlighting the section I want, and then it lets me copy that that part and create a whole new video with it without touching the original video. So I still have everything in the whole video, but now I've got you know 10 or 15 or however many small videos out of that big video, and it, it's all in that same file. Oh, wow. Which is super cool. Um, the other thing it will do is it lets me take a horizontal video and make it vertical, which is super cool. If you're wanting to, you know, repurpose and put things up on reels or TikTok or make some YouTube shorts or anything like that. Um, it, it works really, really well for that. Hmm. These other ones here are ones that I pretty much learned about when I went to the conference a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, in video AI is one that I have heard a lot about, and that is one that will create avatars of people. It will do just all kinds of cool things in video, um, text to video. You can upload a picture and it'll animate it, just all kinds of cool stuff. Um, they're not very long, uh, and I, I know that they have a paid version. I don't know if they have a free version. Um, the rest of these on here are all ones I've never used, um, except the last one, Taja. That's actually one that I'm considering paying for. I haven't yet. Uh, it gives you a free version to try it out. 
And what that program will do is take uh, a video that you've created and that you're going to put it up on YouTube. Um, in fact, does it, ha it has to be on YouTube because you put the link in. So I pasted the link of some of my, uh, a few of my videos, and then it will give me an optimized title that will be more likely something that someone will click on. Oh, okay. It will give me an optimized description that I can copy and paste into um, the description area of YouTube. It creates chapters. Eh, that's kind of iffy on that one. Um, you know, uh, some of my eight-ish minute videos, it only had three chapters, so I think it failed on that. Um, but it will also do uh, AI-generated thumbnails for you. And some of them were okay, some of them were not. <laughs> so, oh, okay. you know, that's why I'm like, maybe I'll pay for it, maybe I won't. Um, but if you're really into wanting to build a YouTube presence, then using some sort of a tool that will help you optimize your titles, I think is a big bonus. Um, because, you know, what I come up with, amazingly enough, people don't really want to know. <laughs> so, so they're not that clickable. You know what I mean? It's not enticing. Um, so th that's possibly one that I may use. Um, and then the YouTube spelled that way, dot AI, will take a video and it'll give you the transcription in it or of it in a way that you can then just copy and paste it and, you know, drop it in as a blog post or whatever you want to do, use it for it's um, unlike the YouTube transcriptions. If you've ever looked at those, like the closed captions transcriptions, they're just words run together. Like they don't have yeah. sentences. They don't have periods, capitalization. Um, it, and it literally is just words run together, which for me is really hard to read. Uh, so using a tool to fix that, um, I personally use ChatGPT. I was going to demonstrate that today, but I can't log in for who knows what reason. <laughs> but when you go, when you upload a video on YouTube and then you give it, well, depending on how long the video is, give it a little bit of time and it creates those, the transcriptions automatically, you have the ability to go back in and edit those. And so what I do is I just um, say I'm going to edit it. I copy it out. And I come over to chat GPT and I say something like um, properly punctuate this text and I put it in quotes and I paste it in there and it will create your sentences, add your commas, add your periods, your capitalizations, all of that stuff. And then I just simply copy it back and dump it right back into YouTube and save that um, edit. If it creates uh, paragraphs, like line breaks, I take those out when I dump them in because I don't want to mess up the timing of the captions with the video. So I don't want any extra stuff in there. Um, so that's one way I use um, chat GPT, aside from writing blog posts, is with uh, my YouTube account and, and the videos. Hmm. But the fun stuff is images. <laughs> For me, anyway. Yeah. Um, I use Midjourney mostly. I've tried, I spelled that wrong. I tried Leonardo. Um, Dolly 3 is actually part of Chat GPT 4. So if you're on the paid version and you ask for an image, it's using Dolly 3. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's really the only place I've used. Dolly, because when you go there directly, you have to pay for it separately. Well, it makes no sense to me when I'm paying for chat GPT and it uses it. So um, I use it that way. Imogen is, I believe, Google's version, um, which I've not tried yet. Uh, I know several people that use Bing Create. They love it. Hmm. I haven't tried that one yet. And this last one I learned about um, discoverdesign.ai. It is specifically for creating book covers. 
so and ebooks and regular books. So if you're wanting to uh, create a book cover for a book you're writing and you want to put it on your website or something, um, that program will do that for you. Again, I've not tried that one. And the audio, again, Descript is, if I need audio, is my go-to. So when you download a video after you've edited it on Descript, you can um, download just the audio version as well. So if you're wanting to start a podcast and you've got some video interviews, you can just create the audio and download it directly and put it up into whatever podcasting um, platform you want to use. Hmm. The other thing that Descript does is it will enhance your audio so that it makes you sound better, which I think is cool. Oh, really? Does it yeah. remove accents? <laughs> well, I don't have an accent, so I haven't tried it. <laughs> well, they tell me I do, so that's why I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, you got that East Coast one. Yeah. So, <laughs> will it do volume uh, equalizing so that the you don't get a reduction in voice and then a real large loud increase and in fluctuation oh. like that what it does it they i believe they call it cinematic um, audio or something like that okay. it gives you more of a rounded um deeper tone and i've not noticed any big fluctuations but i also don't have any in the videos i've been uploading so i don't know the answer to that question. I do know that Descript started as a podcasting editing platform. <laughs> so they've got a lot of audio tools in there that I haven't played with. Okay. Uh, there was something else I was going to say about audio and Descript. Um, if it comes back, I will let you know. Okay. <laughs> These easy? other ones are ones, again, I learned about at that conference and I haven't had the chance to try any of them, um, but I hear that Podstash, if you are doing podcasting, there's some big value in that one uh, that you might want to check out if you are a podcaster. And this last screen here are some other ones that I've learned about and haven't tried yet. Some of them I have. Um, map this will take a link or a PDF and it would create a mind map out of whatever's on there. So if you what? are into mind mapping tools, this one takes a lot of the work out for you. Hmm. Again, I haven't tried it, but I think that one's one I'm definitely going to try. I tried that. It comes out dead end for me. It's because you don't have a mind, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> And if you're making slide decks, I hear this this Tome and Gamma um, works well. I personally use Canva for mine, uh, which is what you're viewing right now. There's one called Super Meme. I tried that one last night. It was just fun. You put in a text of something and it creates a little meme that you can you know throw out on social media. That was the last thing I put on Facebook before I couldn't log in again. So maybe it didn't like it. I don't know. <laughs> this this uh, flicky AI uh, is what this video is. I'm going to play it for you. I don't know if the sound will come through. We'll see. Um, and that is, I put a link in and it created a video. So I went ahead and put a link to just a blog post that's on one of my websites and it created this video. So this is 100% AI. Like I didn't do anything with it. I'm gonna hit play. Now, oh, can you hear it? A website is crucial for business. Yeah, it's soft though. Oh, I, I could turn up myself. <laughs> Integrate your website with CRM software to capture and manage leads efficiently through automated processes. Link social media profiles to enhance online presence and engage with the community, showcasing social proof. Incorporate Google Business Profile for local SEO benefits and to improve user experience with easy access to business details. 
offer online appointment scheduling for customer convenience and operational efficiency. Ensure your website reflects your business branding, showcasing products and services to enhance appeal. Transform your website into a sales machine with e-commerce capabilities and clear package offerings for better customer self-selection. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's also not terrible. And and that was, no, which one, that was? That was Flicky.ai. And I just signed up for a free account. It, I think I only get one video for it. I was just trying it out to see what it would do. But I literally just dropped in a link from one of my blog posts and it went through there, read the post, determined what it was about, found pictures, created the text and threw it up there and it took mm, five minutes maybe, something like that. Oh, wow. Huh. Um, the rest of these I haven't tried. The Coroverse, which I can't even say, uh, is photos to video. Uh, Mind Studio is a custom chat bot. The person that was telling me about that one said that you can actually upload files and files and files, if you have them, of things that you've done and written in your business. And it will scan through all of those files and come up with answers to common questions. And they'll answer them in your, not physical voice, but in like how you speak, you know, how you would write it mm. um, type of a thing. So. That's something worth checking out if you want a custom chat bot to put on your website for, you know, common FAQ kind of questions. Mm -hmm. The Kaber animates images. Um, voice AI is kind of scary. You can upload, like, say, a video of yours. And if you wanted to sound like Tom Cruise, it will change the audio and your video will sound like Tom Cruise. <laughs> you know, and it's got hundreds of famous people in there um, and their voices, which I find really creepy myself. Uh, yeah. I, that's not something I'll be using. Investment world is really concerned with it for frauding. Yes, there's a lot of bad things that could happen with that technology. Um, the last one here is called Quiz Gecko, and that will take something that you have written that you can upload and it'll go through and it'll reformat, reformat it into a quiz style. So if you're wanting to put a quiz um, on social or on your website or something, and you really don't know how to create one, that'll do it for you, which I think that's kind of cool. Again, haven't tried it, um, but we'll see. Hey, so you found a lot of these at, at the conference you went to? I did, yep. They, yeah. were, they were mentioning them at that conference um, so is there anybody here that's used MidJourney at all? No. Okay. Jeff, Jeff's on here. Jeff, do, do you use that? I think he's here. Okay. Jeff, Jeff's here, and yes, I have. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought you did. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, are you seeing these? Yes. yes. Okay. These are just some of the images that I went through. It create whenever you do a prompt, it creates four, and hopefully out of the four, there's one that you like. So these are the ones I did for this presentation, and I'm I mean there's just tons of different styles in here, and learning something like this is like learning taking an art class again. Oh wow! You know because you the more that you know about the different styles of art the easier it is for MidJourney because they trained this bot with famous art. And so if you can tell it a style, then this is one I did for a customer website I'm working on. Um, then you can get decent stuff out of it. Okay. So when you have your account, so these are all my images. I mean, there's probably a thousand of them in there by now. But they have this cool explore tab. And you can come through here and you can say, you know, I think I think this is really cool. And you can click on it. And then it'll tell you what they typed in to get this result, which this was very short. It just says a very cute birthday colorful. 
So that was a bad example. Let's look at something more detailed like this one. Nope, yeah, that's yeah. some of these are extremely detailed. A traveler barefoot in shorts in the icy desert, icicles, northern lights. One of the things that you can do is just take this, because these are all open, copy it, and I just want to show you, this is what that picture looks like. I'm going to take this exact same prompt, drop it in, and we'll see what we get. It won't be like that. And if you want something other than square, you have to give it the aspect ratio that you want. Oh, okay. Because it does square automatically. And you can see it kind of coming through here. And you will see it is very different. Oh, yeah. From that original image. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where they got the plaid shorts from. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That is why the images that you're getting when you're using this program or any of the programs, they're not copyrighted. Because I could give you the exact prompt that I used to do one of the one of my images. And you're going to get something completely different. And no one's ever going to get the exact same thing that you have. Mm. So I have been, because of that, doing more and more of my um, images for websites using these programs so that people are not at risk of getting sued for taking a photo off the internet and using it when they think it's okay and it really isn't. Um, that is a big deal uh, in the image websites world. And I have known people to get sued for 30,000 plus for oh. the use of a photo of Vancouver, of all things. Not even an outstanding photo. It's just a cityscape of Vancouver that a professional photographer took instead of them going to that same spot and taking it themselves. Um, so all of the artwork on my websites is now all AI, all of it. Um, on premium websites, which if any of you visited it, I don't know, a year ago, most of the images on there were my images. And what I did is I took those same images and I uploaded them into Mid Journey and then asked it to give me an artist rendition of watercolor or oil paint or whatever medium I chose that day. And it gave me something similar but different. And I use those on my website now. For one, nobody can steal my image anymore. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm just I'm just taking that whole, you know, image stealing thing away because. Mm -hmm. Why deal with it? What questions do you have? So when you're using them, Dottie, are you noticing that the AI program is actually uh, learning your style? Do you get to do different, less things and get the same results or better results? Um, I've trained it with writing a blog post. So I've, I've dumped in a lot of the SEO knowledge that I have. And I put in a few things like, you know, include the company's name and just a couple other things in there. And I've saved that. So now whenever I want to write a blog post, I can go in there and I know the parameters I need to tell it. Mm -hmm. And it kicks in and it creates a semi-optimized blog post. It usually takes two or three runs at it but it's um, a lot quicker, especially when I'm writing for, cause I sell these to customers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I don't know a whole lot about that industry. Right. So it's not really something I use when I write my own so much, 
But when I'm writing, you know, something for a contractor, I can tell you what a hammer or a screwdriver is. That's about it. <laughs> so then I let them edit it to okay. make it, you know, to <sighs> anything that's not appropriate for their business or, you know, whatever. Right. So uh, with your usage of these, I don't know if you've gone to this level or not. Do they have interfaces that allow you to take an output from one into an input of another, like take a video into an audio and enhance it or change it dynamically with one step? Chat GPT doesn't, um, but some of those video programs from, from the conference that I learned about will. Okay. I haven't had a chance to try them yet, to know how good they are, how accurate they are, um, sure. if you're getting garbage or if it's decent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Okay. But the cool thing about this whole industry is right now we're a baby. Yeah. It's it's just going to get better and better and better, which is a good thing. Um, some of the things that chat GPT can do now, if you've gone into the um, plugins, I think they call them. Okay. You can actually upload, like, let's say you go into LinkedIn, say you're a LinkedIn user, you go in there and you can download your analytics for, um, I did this today, it'll let you go for the last year and save it in a CSV file. And then you can upload that CSV file into chat GPT and ask it to analyze the file and tell you, you know, what's the best time for you to post. Um, what's the best day for you to post? Like it has the last year's data of everything you've done and it can analyze it and tell that stuff to you. Now, of course, when I tried that today, I couldn't log in. So yeah. I only got halfway through that project. Mm. Um, and it will even display it in a nice graph so that you can understand what it's telling you, which I think is cool as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of things it can do. Um, one of the other... Plugins that I use quite regularly is called YT for YouTube. Um, I want to say it's YT Scanner, I think. YT something. Um, and it allows me to drop in a link to any YouTube video. Does I mean, mine, anybody's, mm -hmm. as long as it's set to public. And it will go through there. It will summarize it, tell you what the video is about. It will write you a good description. It will write you a good title. Um, it gives you hashtags. And here's what where I really use it. It gives me chapters and the timing. So I can go through there. Now, it used to do it on a 24-hour clock, which was like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> so then I said, re, <clears throat> re, um, relabel these chapters using minutes and seconds instead of a 24 hour clock and, and it did it for me. So then, you know, I didn't have to calculate, you know, after it went to 60, instead of doing a minute and 20 seconds, it would do like, you know, 80 seconds. It's like, no, that doesn't work. So it does all that kind of stuff too, which I think is cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Jeff, I know you're into this quite a bit. Is there anything you want to add? There's just so much happening every day in this stuff. It's kind of hard to keep up with. So, yeah, it's fine. I don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> I would think the, the one challenge would be mentally keeping together all of the pros and cons of each one of the applications so you know when you need to reach out to that app and apply it versus another one or when one fails in an area how you can use which one to just tweak that area and and those type of interactions between us and the programs seems overwhelming at times well you know if you put that down in a word document you can feed it into my mind map and it'll create a mind map for you 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a perfect usage for that. <laughs> There's Very some really, good. really good guys out there uh, putting out, you know, blogs about stuff that's coming out too. A guy by the name of Matt Wolf. I get his mm -hmm. stuff every day. And he's, uh, you know, if you had a question like that and said, how would I make this better? You could go into his website and actually come up with a tool. He's got be... a great YouTube channel. Are you subscribed to it, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would suggest if you're into this at all, subscribing to Matt Wolf's, um, and he spells Wolf with an E, um, YouTube channel. He's got a ton of great videos on there. Um, with all this AI kind of stuff. Hmm. He's figured out the avatar thing too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm not sure I really want to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So we, we have some guests here um, who aren't, aren't showing you faces. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Or you, you could just um, unmute yourself if you're muted and, and raise your hand and just ask. So now's the time to ask questions while we still have Dottie and Jeff here. They're both experts at this. I don't know about experts, Becky. Well, I don't think anybody's experts right now. It's, it, it, the industry is changing too rapidly to, for it, anybody. It really is. Here. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's one reason I've just picked one. And I almost use it exclusively. And that would yeah. be Mid Journey for Images and Chat GPT for Text. Yeah. I, I just have to mention, I don't know if anybody saw that, but Lynn, <laughs> Lynn was on Zoom before he came back in. He was like this with his mouth wide open. I thought you were doing it as a joke, Lynn. <laughs> oh, I was on? Yeah. <laughs> I brought my. That's I how it cut my... you. Oh, I had to go get my dog. Oh, okay. He was beating on the wall. Oh, okay. Hopefully no, not with his head. No, he's just, he, he's just, he, he lets it be known he wants back inside. Now he's antagonizing the cat. <laughs> uh, I just had to mention that because it looks so funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I have a question about Mid Journey. Yeah, um, sure. I, so I'm an interior designer and I'm looking at ways that I can create like social media content. Um, and sometimes we don't have like final photos of a project, um, but I have like mood boards and I have photographs of the space. Um, do you have any experience with uploading your own images to Mid Journey and asking it to create something off of those images? Yes, I have done that with several of my landscape images. Okay. Um, however... I did it with the purpose of changing the image. And it sounds like you're wanting to do it with the purpose of enhancing what you have. Is that right. a true statement? Yeah. yeah. I would actually jump on YouTube and Google that. Um, there, It's easy to upload because when you're in mid journey, you have the option where you put your prompt in to upload an image. But then the question is going to be, what do you want to tell it um, to do with that image? So okay. I would do just a little bit of research on that because every time I've done it, it's changed it drastically. I mean, I've, I've really liked it, but it's not, um, it's not what you're after. Like, okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Someone put in the chat, that there's a lot of people saying they're experts. There are a ton of people out there saying they're experts and yes, they have courses up the yin yang, but I'm here to tell you, none of them are really experts. It's too new. I mean, can you be an expert in what you do in six months? <laughs> I, the, I wouldn't claim right. that. Yeah. The other program I found that's really helpful for images, I don't really like my journey that well, the journey, but uh, is Stable Diffusion. And mm -hmm. they've just come out with some really good additions this week that are would make that project, you know, really easy to do. So oh, okay. what's it called, Jeff? Stable Diffusion. Okay. And I think they have a more user-friendly interface that's called um, Dream Looker, I think. Yeah, Does that they, sound right, Jeff? Dream Looker? There's two, there's two or three of them. The Stable Diffusion site now is really easy to use. So. Oh, is it? Okay. 
Yeah, it, when it first came out, you had to be a coder to even know what to do with that site. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's nice. I'll give it a try. Oh, here comes Lisa back again. Any other questions? Here's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi. So are we all experts now? Oh, no, no. I, I forgot. To... <laughs> you can say you are, Becky. I'm not going to say I am. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we know I'm not. So thank you very much. I, I always enjoy um, enjoy your presentations, and I always enjoy learning about AI. It's, I've just used it enough to be dangerous, I think. so. <laughs> And then what did, uh, oh, oh, Zam said, great list, Donnie. Yeah. You are welcome. Yeah, so. Stephanie wants to know, what is that tool? What is what tool? Oh, Trish oh. put in there that there's a design tool for that. Oh, remodel.ai. Yeah. Thanks, Trish. Yeah, thank you. Well, we can end the meeting um, now. Do you have uh, any other words of wisdom, Dottie, before we end the meeting? Just make sure you put on your calendar to do something in your Google account every month. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jeff, did you hear that about Google your business? Was he not yeah. here? No, oh. he, he missed the beginning part. Oh, um, starting March 1st, which is this month, Google has decided that if you don't do anything with your Google account at least once a month, that they're going to consider your business inactive, which is not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so upload a picture, get a review, put a blog post in there, do something every month. Well, yeah. So, so we've got we've got sixteen people here right? each write a review for one another yeah <laughs> i have a question about that too um yes. when i've looked that up online it seems like it's mostly for if your business website is through google is it just generally if you have like a business account um like your business is listed on google that it would affect so you're actually talking about two different things um, Google also decided that the websites that were created through the Google business profiles um, are obsolete. They're not going to continue to support them. So March 1st, I believe they are redirecting that URL to your business profile. And then June something, they're going to delete all of those websites. Gotcha. Wow. Yeah. So that's it's a little bit of a different thing. Okay. Mm. You you don't have one of those websites, do you, Stephanie? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. I really, I think I only knew one person that did and, and we've got her moved into something else, so. Oh, let's see. Lisa said, is there a problem with videos on Zoom today? I'm not getting any videos, which is one of the reasons I popped on and off. There is a problem with the entire internet today. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. I, I don't know. It's bad mojo or something. It's like I got dis I got disconnected and had to come back. That never happens yeah. on these meetings. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, like I said, I can't even log into chat GPT. And it's not that my login is bad. It won't give me the login screen. It's mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah, open art AI is another one. I've not tried that, but um, I've heard good things about it. Yeah. I'll ask kind of a generic question. How do you find all these dot AI applications? Like I said, there's probably a hundred coming out every single day. So um, dot AI is just another like dot com as far as extensions go. But you know, there's there is no exhaustive list because there's new stuff literally every day. Right. Most so of it is garbage, but um, I have a resource for that. Um, it's called huggingface.co. Um, and it does have like a, just like a list of all of, I don't know how like up to date or accurate it is, but 
um, that has like a bunch of different AI tools. Yeah, it's, it's called... the one, it has a list of all the ones that interface with Hugging Face. Hugging Face? I think it's F-A-C-E. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So they just got bought by Microsoft last week. So. Oh, oh, really? Did they? I did not oh, know that. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. To think 10 years ago, would did we think we'd be talking about this? About, this? <laughs> about hugging face? Yeah. <laughs> that almost sounds like an Indian name. I know. <laughs> uh, so, well, Trish, what was that? Google Business Profile. I just wanted oh, to okay. send an invitation because I found this um, webinar has been really um, eye-opening in terms of the AI tools and stuff. And I myself have like a private Facebook group community that I'm currently growing about AI for non-techies. And it's about people that come from non-technical, non-coding backgrounds who want to have more of a breakdown of AI tools in their everyday lives and how they can make that transition into using artificial intelligence to either upscale or just for personal use and stuff like that. Oh, okay, great. Cool. Well, thank yeah, you. So thank you very much. No, thank you. It's been a really great uh, webinar. I've liked it. Yeah. So you are you. welcome. Oh, yeah, I would go to your Facebook group, but I can't log in, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so, it got yeah. me again. Oh, no. And I, yeah, I'm sorry you couldn't demonstrate your chat GPT with us either. So, yeah, because yeah, I was able to log into that. That's weird. I don't so, know. Yeah. yeah. I, I had to get my VPN up today, Dottie, to get into anything. So. Oh, today. okay. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't cool. have a VPN though, Jeff. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe I need to restart my Wi-Fi router or something. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Um, we did do a recording and hopefully it was recorded. I mean, hopefully Zoom recorded it because it's on. Uh, <laughs> but I'll be sending it out to, to everybody, including the many people who had registered who could make it on here. They just registered so that they could hear you and get the recording. Hey, Steve, you finally showed your face. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dottie, very much. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Dottie. Dottie. Great stuff. Dottie. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.